Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server editorial or bucket slash spigot plug in tutorial. If you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion of one you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in the jibbles below. That would be the comment section for new people. I will give you a shout out when you get around to it. Like this week is plot squared as requested by I am nude noob Shahir Swish Prison. Blue Gaming XP, Unseen Minecraft, Row Face A Lot, XX Django 9XX, Sam G1234, Meeg Lucario. So, a whole lot of tongue twister, and this is made by I-S. And it's basically like a Plot Me competitor. Um, it does things a little bit differently than Plot Me, and I think it's fantastic. It has this really cool feature that I love that you can merge plots together, so you can have like these odd non-square like plots which is really cool and some of the performance enhancements are pretty awesome um the ways that you can like ma manage and move plots around you can move plots between them it's super simple so before we get into it let's talk about plot me conversion pretty simple you're going to fire it up with plot square dot jar plot me is probably going to overrule it because it has stuff built in to not let you convert things from it then you're going to stop your server you're going to delete plotme.jar start your server again i'm not sure which step it does the conversion but i'm told that it's really fast it'll take a few seconds for a thousand plots and then um and then it's good to go and it should be up and running and then all the commands are pretty much the same you can just do slash p whatever and the commands are all similar you have some new ones like merge and swap permissions i just want to hit a lot of these new things for you guys permissions plots not used to just basic to do basic plots uh commands you could do plots dot world edit dot bypass that lets you to bypass the regions using world edits you probably don't want to give everybody that one plots.admin obviously gives plots uh certain users ability to merge plots and move them around clear them delete them all that stuff uh, plots dot plot dot number is how you set how many plots a user can have so if you set that to one which i think it is by default they can only claim one plot if you set it to four then they can claim four pretty simple then you want to do plots dot perm pack dot basic plots dot perm pack dot basic inbox if you want them to be able to uh post and see comments that people leave on their plots plots dot perm pack dot basic flags now you can do certain flags on your plot whether um mob cap uh, all this other stuff and that gives your users ability to change very basic flags on that list. Now, I would check the link in the jibbles for that list of all the commands, plus a lot more commands and permissions that I have not hit here. You could do p add player, that's the same one. Now, this I really like with this plugin is there's actually layers of of access to your plot you can do p add player and that's going to add players to your plot as kind of a member so they can only build on your plot when you're online and they can't use world edit if you want them to be able to build on your plot whenever and use world edit in your plot then you're going to use trust instead of add and then you can deny players you can untrust players you can remove players you can even kick players from your plot so maybe they're on your plot causing some problems you can just kick them and it'll remove them from your plot and then you can deny them so they can't even come on your plot which is really cool you can do p set home and that's going to set your home plot to whichever one you're on you can do p download it's going to download the schematic of the plot that you're working on and then you can do comments of it you can do p comment and then uh the x colon z of that plot which that shows up in titles when you f go over it and then you can do to the owner you can report or you can s set public and then your comment and then you can do p inbox to check your inbox of comments so let's get into building it it's super simple it's a lot easier than plot me i believe uh but it, it still uses multiverse if you don't use multiverse and you just want your spawn world to to do the plot squared you need to change that generator in your bucket.yml or spigot.yml file you need to change that from the default one to plot squared otherwise you'll run into problems where the plots will start being regular terrain but this plugin does have a feature where you can build plots inside of regular terrain we'll hit that at the end of this this is gonna be a little bit longer tutorial so mv 
create, and then we're going to call this one plots, and then we're going to do normal uh, G, and then we're going to use the plot squared generator. Now, not only can you do this, it's going to have the default generation settings, which I think plots are like 42 by 42 roads or seven, all that stuff. You can at this point set different uh, variables. It'll be on the screen here. You can set your plot size. You can set your gaps. You can set your height, floor, main, wall, border, all that stuff. That's really, really cool. And that's just a colon and then whichever one height uh, and then 54, whatever you want it to be. So then that would be the height of the plot and then, or you could, and then you can even, then you split it up with comma and you do M, which would be main, which is the main block. And then you can change the main block type of there, which is really cool, but we're going to leave it as a default there. And so we're just creating that and it's pretty much done. So now that that's done, we can we can actually we can teleport to it or we can just do P auto, which is going to claim the next available plot. And there we go. We have our plot. So uh, there we go. Now we see that tutorial or that title up there. Now, once you have your plot world created, you have to set your um, road. If you don't like this road style, you can change that. So we're going to come over here and change that to okay so we have our world or our road created it's super basic you can do whatever you want um side note if you're not using multiverse if you're using a different kind of world like multi-world that's gonna the command for creating this world is gonna be mw create world name plugin colon plot squared doesn't look like it has the same switches as multiverse so i'd highly recommend multiverse plot create road schematic oops I'm so used to plot me, so we're saved road schematic. So now we can fly to a few other plots and, and test it out. Now they say that you can only, you could get by with only creating one side of it, but I was having trouble with that. So they, they do actually recommend just create the road all the way around one plot and then you'll, you'll be good to go. So we're going to do P debug road regen. So now that's just going to test our road regen it looks pretty good so then we can just do p regen all roads and then uh this command can only be oh okay so okay there we go now that does take a little bit depending on how much you have uh generated there and there it goes the oven we don't have a whole lot so it's pretty quick and easy and I want to do that early on, but you can change that later and you don't have to do the regen. It can, it'll slowly do that over time as new chunks are loaded um, or reloaded, all that stuff. Now, you have another co cool feature is you can actually, as a new plot is created, it can be a schematic of some, time, some kind. So maybe you want them to have like a default house or something when they, when they claim the plot. So the, the, the trick with that is to save a plot or save the schematic using world edit, which it has to be the same exact plot area. I would highly recommend using the expand vert and then copy command and then save the command and then put it in your, your schematics folder. Now you might have to create that in your plot squared, which is really easy. It'll be on the screen here. And then you can do plot schematic test and the schematic name. And then you can do plot schematic paste schematic name and then you can update your settings that yml file with that schematic name which is really cool and we'll see that that in the settings pretty soon here now another cool feature is you can merge plots so we're going to do p home so here is our plot and that chunk looks like uh it's having issues but anyway <laughs> So this is, wait, I already forgot which one's home. Okay, this one's home. So the trick with merging plots is both plot needs to be owned by this one, by the player. So we're gonna do P, P claim and we're gonna do that. And then we'll see, we're gonna see which face we're facing north. Then you do P merge north. And then that merges that one. And then you can actually, if you wanna do this, we do P claim, we can claim this one. And then we can merge east, uh, P east. Like I said, really easy. You can have like really odd shaped plots. I don't know what's going over there. I think it's just chunk generation issues. 
And uh, that's pretty cool. So the, we'll talk about the plot flags. You can do a flag list to see all the fl the flags that you can set. You can set some of these by default, like mob caps, all that stuff in your config. Or if you have a problem player, you can set it on their plot themselves and they can't change that stuff. Now, you have some really fun other commands that we could talk about. You have some performance increasing commands. Then you can also condense your plots. So what you could do is you could do plot... Now it's not going to really show anything. You do condense and then plots as the world name and then info and then radius 100. Uh, and that one can only be executed from the console. But anyway, what that all is going to do is that command is going to tell you how many plots outside of that radius there are and how many will be saved, all that stuff. And that, that's just an informational command. It's not going to do anything. And that's of a radius from zero zero from the exact middle of that world and then you can start that you can do condense world start and then that radius command and it's going to move plots around to make sure that they're all used up now keep in mind it's very server intensive so try not to do that when you have a bunch of people on maybe just kick them all off put it in maintenance mode get that done um but it's really cool that's there. You can also trim the world uh, chunks that are generated from people wandering outside and not really claiming anything. That's going to be plot, trim, all, and then the world name. And then you can also enable chunk processing in settings.yml, which we're going to talk about in two seconds here. And that's going to stop spamming from entities and blocks from people using world edit or voxel sniper or anything else that you can think of because it's going to not save the chunk into memory until um like right away it's gonna put that off until it knows that it's safe to do that and then it will save it it's gonna save your server a little bit of lag let's hop over to the settings file and take a look okay so here we are in our generation here i've actually already created a normal generated world called cluster to show you guys that in uh in world clustering of plots so you don't need a dedicated plot world it can be inside those so now we're going to go into our plugins folder. We're going to open up plot squared. Now there's a whole lot of stuff. Your schematics will be in here. If you want to put custom schematics in there, once again, you can create that folder um, associated to that world in here. We've got scripts, templates. We're not really going to talk about a lot of that stuff. The only thing we're looking at is config and then the settings. Now the storage is going to be if you want to switch it over to an SQL database rather than the SQL light, all that stuff. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff in here that I'm not really going to hit. It's pretty self-explanatory. The confirmation is going to be when you're clearing or unlinking or anything like that. Uh, you can put this in offline mode so that the UUID does not come in, into effect. You can change caching. Now, here's your trunk processing. You can enable this. It's disabled by default. Set it to true, and it'll auto-trim, auto-load trunks as it needs. It'll, it's just for really reducing lag on your server. Now here's your world edit stuff. You could blacklist different things from your world edit commands. You can set the max volume of your world edit. Here's where your plot squared schematics will be saved. Um, you can also update this stuff and put your URL website and your server IP in here, which is really cool. Here's some approval stuff for downloading all that stuff if they want people to be able to download from their plots they need to get a approval first which is really cool you can change your chat here's your console kill mobs on roads really easy stuff here's your plot me convert you can put that on false after you've finished all that stuff you got global limit comments protection all that stuff now here's going to be the worlds that we've created now we've created plots and then uh, we've set all of that. That's all default stuff that was in there. Now we want to enable our clusters. So we're going to do true. Uh, spell that right. Then what we want to do is copy this over. And then paste it down here. And we want to change the world plots to be our cluster world. So that's going to be cluster or whatever the name of the world is that you have. And then that's it. So then that will work for when we're we get back into the game so pretty self-explanatory there's a whole lot of commands in here or a whole lot of settings in here that 
are pretty straightforward. Let's go back and take a look at clustering real quick and then we'll wrap it all up. Okay, so here we are in our generated world. This is the cluster world or it can be whatever world that you've named it. We've restarted, we've put that in the settings.yml file, the, the world settings. Now there's a really odd uh, equation that you need to put in in order to run this command. I've put it on the screen here and I'm gonna talk about it in a sec. Basically you need to to figure out what your plot ID one or and your plot ID two, which is gonna be the opposite corners of your cluster area are gonna be. And it's really kind of odd to figure it out. I wish they could make it easier, but so anyway, we're gonna start at zero, zero. That means that your X and Z is gonna be, or X and Z, if you're over the pond, that's gonna be one semicolon one. And then your second one is we're gonna wander over to 100 to 100. And then that equation then equals three. So the command that we're gonna do is we're gonna do plot cluster. Ooh. Actually, we just do p cluster create tutorial and then one, one, and then three, three. So that is created our cluster. We're going to do p, p cluster. I wonder if I could just do c tutorial. Oh, whoops. p cluster tp tutorial. There we go. So we are at that place. It started generating some stuff because I think I claimed that plot on accident. But what we want to do is do p cluster regenerate successfully regenerate and that's going to start showing up. There we go. And then I've claimed that that cluster. And now you can see that it's created the cluster inside the world that we've created. Now it's only a six uh, three by three area it's it's smaller um, because the plot size is 42 the road size is 7 so based upon that command it's 42 plus 7 you know and then your x divided by that which 0 divided by that is 0 and then plus 1 which is 1 and then 100 uh, divided by 49 or whatever is like 2 something I don't know or 3 something 3 and then plus 2 something yeah whatever so anyway, the way that you have to work on this cluster is you have to invite them to the cluster. So that's going to be p cluster invite player, and, or you can just use star instead of player if you want to invite everybody. So that is it. Hopefully that was helpful. This plot uh, management plugin is fantastic. We're actually looking at moving over to it. I love, love the merge feature. I really like the cluster feature, even if it is not that intuitive some of the extra commands with the different varying levels of access to your plot is really cool you can set your plot to done you can trim off your plots it's great for admins so hopefully that helps get you guys started you can play with this a little bit uh, poke around at it feel free to ask questions i'll do my best but i haven't used this plugin very extensively yet so it might be pretty limited or you can post on the author's page it looks like they're pretty active so be sure to like comment and subscribe this is cos from mcfriends reminding you guys all enjoy the game god bless you.